this episode, we're going to be talking about Nintendo's Metroid Prime 4, Pokémon Tournament DX, Ultra Sun and Moon, Super Mario Odyssey, and Splatoon 2. And I am here today with my two guests, Chris and Vicky. Game Freak, Pokémon. Do they have any other games? Um... <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. Do you need any of the games of the Pokemon? Like, seriously. <laughs> um, they have announced a upgraded version of Pokemon Sun and Moon. Ultra Sun and Moon. Slated for 2018, if I remember correctly. Um, along with Pokemon... Sorry, wow. Poke and Tournament DX, which is a yet another reversioned um, port from the Wii U uh, Poke and Tournament. They've just added in some new Pokemon to it, which people were hoping for a long time they would have done to the Wii U version and like have a downloadable content version to it, but that never happens. Um, for those, yeah, what do you guys think? Yeah. I mean, Pokemon is, Pokemon's kind of always been in its own bubble. Um, so, I mean, like, downloadable content. Has Pokemon ever had downloadable content? I think that's one of the things that they were like, oh, like, people were like, oh, you see all these people doing DLC? This is so cool. Like, oh, okay. And then, like, stayed in their corner doing whatever they did. Like, that's just how I feel for Pokemon. Like, they just do whatever they want to do. What do you think, Vicky? I mean, it would have been cool to have the downloadable content. Um, especially if, you know, I had a Wii U and I don't want to go out and buy a Switch. But it's really going to cost me. It's really going to have to push me to go spend money to go buy the Switch and then buy the game because they want to allow me to have downloadable content. Um, but Pokemon Go, I mean, not Pokemon Go, Pokemon Sun and Moon. Um, I want to see how the sales do for. The updated version because I know the Pokemon Sun and Moon that came out this year, oh, sorry, last year, um, it was really like a marketing scheme in a way because they released Pokemon Go, which brought people like, you know, we got people hyped up over the game and releasing on a smartphone platform and it got more players interested in the game. And then shortly after, you know, they released Pokemon Sun and Moon. They had they were, they were then like targeting persons who didn't really play Pokemon Pokemon like that. So they were, they were targeting the casual players um, as well as, you know, the persons who played competitively and so on and played like every day. So like that was a plus for them simply because, you know, they marketed really nice. And I'm pretty much sure that this, the sales for those two games are skyrocket. So I want to see how the sales for, for this updated version will be when they release it next year. There's something I do want to clear up. Is it Pokemon or Pokemon? Chris? I, oh, I don't care. I just call it however I want to call it. Pokemon. I think you call it Pokemon. So Pokemon, Pokemon. Hmm. Regardless... <laughs> Um, the next bit of news about Pokemon is that, surprise, surprise, not really, a core uh, Pokemon RPG role-playing game will be coming to the Nintendo Switch, maybe within the next year or more. Not quite sure what that means. Um, is it going to be the regular Pokemon game, or is it going to be different? Is it going to be something I think it's going to be. I think it's probably going to be regular. I think. I think they're going to probably go for a full, finally a full 3D RPG Pokemon game. Um, I know they. I know Sun and Moon was kind of kind of like that on the 3DS, but it wasn't like. I mean, this is 3DS. It's not a like mainline console like the Switches. Like the Switches run Skyrim, like that type of 3D. So. If we get that type of 3D Pokemon, like a core Pokemon game on the Switch, I think that's going to be, that alone is going to sell Switch sales. I think that alone is going to sell Switch sales. And I think that's something that Nintendo is kind of pushing for um, Game Freak to do. 
and my only concern is they didn't show any footage at all and i think and that was my biggest problem with nintendo at e3 they like metro prime again they gave us like a, a gif a gif they gave us a gif and it was just gif metroid prime 4 and it's like granted while i'm still hyped for it um it's kind of has me concerned so where are you in the development stage of this i don't know and it when you don't have any type of footage at all it makes me feel like you haven't started or you're not far along in the development cycle speaking of let's see if we can find that um Uh, that was Metroid Prime 4. And that was it. That was it. Yep. They got the little weird music going on there. And, like, during their gameplay trailer, like, they, well, the gameplay, they showed off the, um, the remake of the 3DS version, which admittedly looks gorgeous. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a little old, underwhelming what Nintendo's been doing with with the Metroid Prime trailer. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it was just, it's just, an, it's literally was just an announcement. It was just an announcement to say that it's in development. We don't know how, how far along in development it is. We don't know when it's going to ever, like, when it's going to be released, if it's going to be released. It's just that, oh, it's in development. That's, that's no, that's not to say that, oh, we'll come out um, anytime soon. Uh, it's, I don't know. Like, again, I'm hyped for it. Um, and it's one of those like things that I'm the most hyped for, but at the same time, it's not really. It's it's a bit concerning that that's all that they showed us. Yeah. So like at the same time, it's kind of just like you know one of those things that go you know, um, let's just preview something and really show them exactly what the game is, like keep them guessing to get them more excited to figure out what's what's going on with the game, which is going to be in the game and when is it going to be coming out so i guess that was their goal um but at the same time i would question it because i would want to see that you know how far you are with development of the game instead of just you know showing me okay you're announcing the game and you got me excited for the for the announcement for the, of the game but i want to see the development of the game i mean but uh, like but then look at beyond good and evil too like we don't know much about Beyond Good and Evil 2. Like, they, didn't, they, they literally just showed us a scene. That scene might not even be in the game itself. But that was something, that was enough to, like, we could see that, hey, at least they have something. At least they have, like, character designs. At least they have, like, worlds established. Like, at least they have enough to make a scene. Whereas Metroid Prime 4 doesn't have anything. I mean, they could have they could even had just, all they did was just show us Samus. We all know how Samus looks. But just the matter of fact of showing that and then showing the logo, that would even be a little bit more because at least they would have, okay, well, we have a character design. Like, that's that's there, you know? we The character design of Samus isn't going to change that drastic. Like, it's Samus. So they could have, I, I just think that if they were further along in the development, they could have done more. And the fact that they did do more is, I don't know, it's just, it's just super concerning. That's possible. Um, so... That's that's our Metroid Prime Four. So again, Splatoon's. I loved it when I played it on the Wii U. I am a bit curious as to how exactly they're going to have it, where you have your specials, because I know on the Wii U on the gamepad version of it. 
you'd actually have to press on the touchpad for the gamepad the way you wanted it to launch if it was something that you know flew off now obviously they've got some new weapons like the um, bazookas well the I don't remember I don't know the actual term for it but um the rocket launchers and that goes a distance I'm not sure how that's gonna work but I'm really looking forward to it what about you guys um I'm looking forward to it as well. I have actually played part one, but I've seen my nephew play it before. And he seems to, well, he's like 27. He seems to really enjoy it. And we don't like the same games, sort of. So I'm interested to see how they're going to push things towards the part two. And I tell you, like I said, with the VU where you tap the screen, um, I think maybe they'd have that implemented with. Uh, you know, you can deta attach the oh man, the joystick part to the to the tablet, the uh -huh. screen tablet. Yeah, that. Um, I they probably may have it like that. Um, if they don't, I'm interested to see how they'd have it for those who play with just the joysticks in their hand instead of just the tablet attached to the joysticks. It's it's gonna be interesting with that. Chris, do you have any thoughts about Splatoon 2? Um, I mean, I haven't played the first. Uh, I'm just disappointed that they didn't have as catchy of a song as they did for the first one. The first one had a pretty catchy song with it. Um, one of my friends annoyed me a lot with that song. Um, so I'm kind of disappointed that they don't have a catchy song again. Um, but I mean, it seems like it'll be cool. I mean, it, it, it was obvious that they were sharing off new weapons. So. I guess if people play Splatoon would uh, be excited about that, but I'm not. I'm not excited about Splatoon. I was never a fan of the first one, and this one is like, oh, okay, that's nice, but it, it's not on my watch list of games. Oh my God. Fair enough. Intro to that made me cringe a little bit, I'll admit. But it it seems like the Kirby that we know and love, at least the majority of us love, I had to think. Um, it seemed like we could make particular characters like our companions, and there's multiplayer, so it seems. Um, but like, what do you guys think about the game? Um. Well, like you said, it, it does seem like the Kirby most people love. Um, super the Kirby I played on like Game Boy Advance and so on, but I think it, it's more like a Kirby and friend kind of sort in a way, whereas you can now share a love with different characters and you can, I guess, have them like tied along with their adventure. Um, and then, like you said, I saw a bit of multiplayer as well. So it isn't just a straight flat out Kirby one player. You now have where Kirby where you can have friends come over and be like, oh, you know, let's play some Kirby if you're like just wanting to like kill some downtime. So yeah, I think that's how I feel about the game. It's pretty pretty interesting. Still the same Kirby from Game Boy Advance. <laughs> so I have to ask, typically Kirby's version of sharing the love is sucking them inside of him. And then spitting them out or stealing their powers. Is that like what what kind of love are you referring to? <laughs> Obviously the love where you suck someone in and then absorb them. <laughs> Obviously. Well, that's I I'd say that's maybe love. And then like you have a love two point or so. Whereas, you know, like when when he dropped the that's heart on love. them. Yeah, where he dropped the heart on them and they all naturally became friends and like, oh you know, let's explore together. So I think we love 2.0. Okay. Love 2.0, aka 4. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, what are you, what's your thoughts about Kirby? At least let's um, go around. It, I love Kirby. Kirby's awesome. Um, I normally have a lot of fun with Kirby games. I like that they kept it as a side scroller platform. I think that's awesome. Um, I like the multiplayer component. I mean, there's... The first they're saying co-op, but we all know you're just going to be trying to figure out how to screw over everyone else 
much as possible while playing this game. Like, that's just what's going to happen. Like, I saw the, the part with a guy, like, he put up the little umbrella. Like, I guess, help her be across to, like, do the water. Come on. I, I know that if I'm that guy with the umbrella, the second you get halfway through that, I'm dropping the umbrella and you're going to soak the water. Like, that's just exactly what's going to happen. This is going to be, like, it just is going to be amazingly fun. Like, this looks like it's going to be so fun. Like, to have four people on the screen, uh, or four people playing, and you all have to help each other, you know, that's not going to happen. Uh, it's just, it's just going to be, this is going to be utter chaos. People are going to be trying to, like, absorb powers and use powers. This, this is going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I think it's going to be a fun game. Okay, so for a while, I have honestly been thinking about this game since, you know, seeing it, the trailer and stuff like that, and it's been on my mind and making me want to play it. Um, I don't know, though. It has an... I hate to say it, but it has an exorcist kind of feel to it. It's like you're possessing these people and these things. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then just doing whatever you want. It's like your body goes into them. And like I guess you pop back out when you're done using them. It's 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 kind of weird. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's I don't know. I just think it's super weird. I think it's like ridiculously weird. It's like it's such a weird game. It's like you you're playing as Mario, but kind of like the hat because the hat has a thing of its own, and the hat is really what has you going into all these different things and. Um, I think that this game is going to be a complete and utter game changer, like every single other Mario platform that's ever come out. Every like, start with the granddad of them all, Super Mario sixty four. Like, that was just hands down probably one of the best games that has ever been made. And then we had after that another game that just like as great as that game was, you're like, oh man, this game is so good. And then they come with Super Mario Sunshine. And it's like, what? Like when you first saw it, you're like, what the hell is this? Mario with a super soaker and you're running around doing water water stuff? Like this, like, this makes no sense. Then you get the game and you start playing the game. And you're like, oh my goodness, this is so fun. This is so re this is so amazing. Like they just flipped the script on you again and made another just game changer. And now they come with this weird thing with Mario in a hat. And I mean, it's like it looks so weird. But I just see this thing playing so beautifully, and I just see this thing just being another thing, another game that we play, and we just have, we don't even realize when our standards for game, for games, go up from just because of this game by itself. And I just think it's going to be one of those games. It's, just, it's super weird, looks super fun. This actually has a catchy song, Splatoon. Um, <laughs> 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 and... I, I'm just, I just, I, like, I don't know how this game is gonna go wrong. Like, I just think this game is too weird in order to fail. Well, for me, when I first saw the trailer, I was like, this is a while back. And it's kind of a bit sketchy about it, because you know, I was so used to, like, my standard Mario game. But as I continue seeing the trailer more and more, I'm kind of like, oh, you know, I'm kind of interested in this game. It looks like Shimmy Fire is like a game changer, whereas. It's the Mario world that we love, but a twist of the real life world. And the fact that, you know, you just like throw your hat on something. But like, oh, you know, I can possess this. And it's kind of similar to Kirby, whereas he shares his love 2.0 um, with the hard way he catches friends and they go along with his journey with them. So I, I'm, a, I'm a Super Mario. Like, I love Super Mario. So I would be stoked to play this game. Love 2.0. Okay. We're, we're, we're going with that. We're keeping that, apparently. I already told you what that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're at the end of our show. Keep tuned for more reviews, information about esports and gaming. And I'm looking forward to meeting you guys again next week on Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Unless you're watching this on YouTube, then I'll see you next time.
Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong, but those were new skills that I saw, right? Those look sexy. Um, granted, I have not played Kingdom Hearts myself in quite a while. Well, there hasn't really been a Kingdom Hearts game in a while, but um, it has me really interested. Really interested. Uh, I um, I don't know where where I'm at on this. I love Kingdom Hearts as a series. Like this is, I love Kingdom Hearts. Like I remember the first Kingdom Hearts. It was amazing. And I played a little bit of two, but I didn't finish two. But what really turned me off was all those little offshoots that they had on so many different platforms. And I just never got into them. So, like, I'm at a point where I feel like I've missed so much and it's ridiculous to try to catch up. And yeah, they did release a bundle where you can play, like, I guess the most important games, um, I think on the PS4 or whatever. But my thing is, is like, that's, that's still a commitment. That's still time for me to go, one, buy your bundle, and then two, play through all of those games. I don't know if I'm going to do all of that just to play three. Um, but that said, it looks, the game looks great. I mean, for those who've been like, who are pretty sure this is like, I mean, this is huge. Finally, Kingdom Hearts, you've been waiting for this for years, <laughs> years, and hopefully it's everything we want it to be and more but just for me personally like i don't know how i feel on it like if i'm gonna get it or not simply because i don't know if it's something that like because i haven't kept up with the story and the story is like fragmented and all over the place because they did this 2.5 and then they did uh breath of sleep and then they did all these other different like offshoots and stuff like that and i'm just like that's that's a lot of Kingdom Hearts to keep up with, especially since they jumped platforms a lot. So that's where I'm at on, on Kingdom Hearts 3. Wow. Um, I personally have played any of the Kingdom Hearts series. I don't know, I'm probably going to get you for saying this, but yeah, I never actually played them. Um, but from what I've heard from Chris, if the story is like that, and I'm not one of those persons where I, like, if I start a game, I have to play it from part one straight to part three. It's like, I, I got to capture the whole story. Um, but if the story is split up in all different side stories, it would it would kind of question me as to whether I'd be like, want to purchase the whole bundle so I get the full kind of experience, or do I just want to play one, two, and then jump to three? Um, but I know... It is a major thing out there because like people have been waiting for Kingdom Hearts 3 for years now. So I've seen a lot of hype over it via social media. Um, I've had a few friends be like, oh yeah, you know, finally Kingdom Hearts 3. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people are going to be happy when it actually comes out. I know right now that's saying that it's still in development. And even in development, you know, this it still looks beautiful. And but that may just be the stuff that's actually been worked out and kinks been removed, but yeah. Just you, the wide open world, and oh, well, it's not just you, she's here too.
pirate life is here on the Sea of Thieves, and you can live yours however you want. So rally your crew. Swear your oaths and set sail for riches and infamy. Become a pirate of legend. Just try not to be this one. Okay. So when I first saw it, I was really impressed. And then I saw the graphics. And then I saw the whole shooting from a cannon and that barely hit his health. And then the one shot kills. I'm not sure how I feel about this one. And it also has that like Eve Online feel to me. It's, uh, uh... I uh, like I saw it and I was like, eh, trash. Move on. I I tossed it into the trash bin. And it's all this ex Xbox One exclusive. Yeah, okay, Xbox is trash already, so this is gonna be trash too. Bias. Um. <laughs> I'm not biased. I mean, Xbox One. Like Xbox One has lost. They have. Lost. I don't even know why they're at E3. To be honest, I really don't know why they're at E3. The 360 was amazing, and then. They did exactly, they did with the Xbox One, exactly what Sony did with the PS3, and that's why the PS3 was trash. And it's like, you got, it's like they didn't understand why Sony lost that generation. And then, because they went ahead and did the exact same thing Sony did, where Sony was like, we're not doing that ever again. And as a result, as we can see, Sony is just, like, Sony's just winning right now. Because Sony has, like, Sony just has these great games out for it and xbox like great exclusives coming out for it and xbox just doesn't just doesn't have an exclusive like when they get exclusives it looks like sea of thieves where the best thing about that trailer was the announcer guy uh the narrator and unless he's in the unless he's in the game then that's if he was in the game then i may change my opinion that, that would make the game uh a bit cooler not worth buying but a bit cooler wow vicky <laughs> Um, I agree with Chris. I feel like when I first saw the trailer, the narrator was really on point. Um, had some like a little corny joke turn there, and it was really like whoever narrated the game, like I give them about an eight. <laughs> um, you spoke about the graphics. I could, I could somewhat look past the graphics. I don't know. Yeah, I Minecraft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I for not liking my games, looking so realistic, like it's kind of creepy for me. Um, but I can look past the graphics. The uh, the one cannonball kill is a bit extra. Um, as I kind of said, oh, you know, the cannonball gun is like super super powerful and it just kill creatures with just like one hit. Um, but. I'll, I'll wait to see how the game does when it comes out, so we can put trust the same to see if it's trash <laughs> or if it actually surprises. Him. <laughs> so you're actually gonna get this particular game? Oh, I'm not gonna get this particular game. I'm probably gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably gonna look up reviews online to see how the game does. So <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> You'd have to buy like a whole Xbox One just to get this game. Who's doing that? <laughs> That's quite true. That is quite and true. And for instance, after seeing E3, I have seen so far a few people who be like, oh, you know, I think I'm going to press a PS4 now. Like, these are Xbox fanatics, persons who are loyal to Microsoft. And they're like, okay, you know, like, their E3 conference is total trash. I want to press a PS4. Like, I've seen a few people come to me and tell me that already, and I said, okay, you know, if you guys want to join the bandwagon, jump up to me, then sure, let's do it. Our next game is actually going to be Days Gone, I think it's called. Yeah, Days Gone. Inside. What happened? I got hit again. Squatters off the highway. We've got to get some men together, go after them. <sighs> Don't look at me, it ain't my problem. They've got Manny. 
You sent Manny on a supply run. I just run the camp, Deke. I don't tell folks how to live their lives. Go to hell, Cope! Bike. Yeah, this way. Oh. I like some of the elements of it. One, when I first was watching it, I was not honestly expecting a zombie game. Um, until, you know, he's walking past the corpse and then it tries to grab it. Um, I'm liking the, like, the clues. When he found the bike, then he kind of saw the little trail going off the way and like, so he's like, okay, head over that way. And the story seems actually pretty nice, along with some other elements, but it seems like it's a game that can kind of, like, absorb you for at least a few hours at a time. Yeah, I mean, I was... I've, I've seen this game before, and I was, I was super stoked for it. Like, I'm... This game, it's just... It just looks so good, like... The whole I like the whole aspect they have um, with how you can go about doing different things. Like he used the zombies like normally in a zombie game, what you're thinking of is they're thinking like, okay, the zombies are a nuisance. Like you have to know you have to work around the zombies, you have to get away with them. Like oh, and, like your main antagonist is the zombie. But here, this guy legit used the zombies twice against them. Like the first time. He lured the guy uh, to get into the bear trap because then, the guy, of course, the guy is screaming. So he's like, he literally attracted a crew of zombies. You saw the zombies who was running towards the camp as he was leaving. Then, when he found where Manny was, he decided to blow up the fence that they constructed in order to let the zombies aside right in there. And, like, it's just a swarm. And he was just chilling. He was just watching the zombies running and just swarm everyone. And, like, that little bit of strategy in it, because I thought it was kind of... They talked more about it the first time I saw it. Um, I can't remember if that was at E3 or another conference, but I remember they did preview this game before. And it was very cool. I was very excited to see it, and I'm glad that it's coming out kind of soonish. The... Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, I agree with Michael. Oh, I guess as well. Um... But I kind of like how we have the big storyline set up where he saw the bike. Like, okay, you know, this is clearly where I need to go. Um, and like, Chris, he's quite really like, using, using the zombies differently compared to everybody else. It's like, usually when you play a zombie game, like, they pick the zombies to be like, oh, you know, they're a nuisance, and we need to get rid of them, or we need to hide from them, or so on. Whereas this guy has his own perspective of them. And basically like okay you know they're here and i either use them to keep myself alive or i do the typical thing like other people do and try to kill them off or just put them to be a nuisance to be quite honest um 
It had a Living Dead. Sorry, Walking Dead. And Dead feel? Know. Yeah, it had a Walking okay. Dead feel to me. Um, and I really liked that, to be quite honest. Um, so, I, I would be really interested in at least watching how the gameplay is. Maybe not playing it so much, but definitely watching it. Uh, Lavin, the game's name is, um, Chris, can you help me out? Days Gone. Days Gone. Let's see, I, I was on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was on that one. forgotten the fear of death. Allow me to reacquaint you. Destiny 2. Destiny, the original, had a huge following. Um, but it was, if I remember correctly, it was mainly, con it was only console. Um, I know Destiny has now started a deal with Blizzard, because Blizzard likes to play Destiny, it seems. They actually have it where you can pre-order the game for PC, and they are, that will allow you to play Destiny 2 on PC, which I think is awesome, and it seems like it's cross-platform, at least that's the way it's sounding, um, but like would help me out with this. Like, I um, I was crazy excited for Destiny too. Like, I was like, oh man, like this is just awesome because one of the things we'll finally be able to solve, finally be able to answer the age-old question of which is better for first-person shooters, controllers or keyboard and mouse, and it is going to be cross-platform. Like they've they've been like that. They've said that um, Xbox players. PlayStation players and PC players will all be playing together. Like they've said that. So finally, console people will really understand that keyboard and mouse is just superior in every shape, form, or fashion when they're getting headshots consistently to the face <laughs> over and over and over. And their little aim assist on consoles won't help them because aim assist is still a thing. Consoles still have aim assist, and people don't realize that because they think, oh, yeah, I did a headshot on a, on a PlayStation, chances are you completely missed that. On a PC, you would have missed that shot completely. There is no aim assist on PC. Like, wherever your cursor is, when you hit that button, either you hit or you don't hit. And because you can get so precise with a mouse, like, it's just going to be, it's just going to be no contest. So I'm, I'm, I just want to see the results of that alone for Destiny 2. Um, outside of that, I was super stoked for Destiny 2. And then they showed Anthem, and I was like, screw Destiny 2, we have Anthem, so... <laughs> like, Anthem is literally everything I wanted Destiny 2 to be. So, yes, Master Race PC, exactly. Lavin understands, <laughs> PC is the Master Race. And, but they showed Anthem, when I saw Anthem, I was like, Anthem is literally everything I wanted Destiny 2 to be. Like, and I'm, granted, Anthem is going to come out a year after, so... I mean, we're still going to... Destiny 2 should be grateful that Anthem is coming out, like, a whole year after. Because if it wasn't, it would have been serious competition for Destiny 2, and I think that they would have lost a significant chunk of their fan base simply from Anthem being released. The only thing that can that can possibly save Destiny 2 is the fact that Anthem is being done by EA. <laughs> so, and we know EA is going to screw something up. It's just a matter of what. What are you going to screw up, EA? What do you screw up with Anthem? Because Anthem looks gorgeous. So what is it you're going to screw up? But Destiny 2, I'm really excited for it. They have a whole... The only reason why I didn't get into the original Destiny was because um, I got into it late. And just jumping into a game like that so late in the game, it I just I just couldn't really, really get into it. You know, like all of my friends were like really ridiculously high level already. So it's just not something that I could get into. So 
I'm probably gonna get Destiny 2 when it drops, and I'll probably start playing with everyone else, simply so I can be with everyone while they're doing it, and that may keep me in the game. So, Destiny 2 is definitely something that I'm planning to get, and I, like, I'm I'm really excited about it. Like, they didn't even show a trailer for it, I'm just excited for it in general. I've already pre-ordered it over on Blizzard to play on my computer. Oh, look at this one. <laughs> um. I kind of, like, I'd agree with Chris, I want to see how the cross-platform would go because there's a uh, mass war between console and PC players, whereas console players believe that they're, they're basically being supreme, and then PC comes back, and it's like a big dispute, so I think this will finally be the answer to the goal of the dispute, and it's like Josh Dropper right there, like I said. So I'm, I'm, I'll be excited to see it. I probably won't buy it. I'll probably watch the gameplays of it to see how it goes. Um, but yeah, and I haven't played Destiny 1, but Chris seems to enjoy it a lot. <laughs> Chris, quick question, kind of putting you on the spot, like Destiny 1 or Horizon? Horizon. Well, how's that even a question? <laughs> yeah. how, like, how is that even a question, Horizon? Like, Horizon I, is just a... A significantly better game in every shape, form, or fashion. I don't even know how Horizon does those load times. Like it's just, I had crazy load times to Destiny. Like when I played Destiny, those load times were were awful, god awful. But Horizon was like you get maybe a slight, a uh, decent, like acceptable load time, like when you first load in, and then after that, it's just like the game is just go 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 like all the time. Horizon, Horizon, Horizon looks way better. Horizon plays better. Horizon is just. Does hit more feats than Destiny have has. Um, Lavin's saying that. Speaking of cross-platform, I think Paragon tried to implement it. Not sure if that went well though. Personally speaking, I know I didn't really look a whole lot into Paragon, and it. I didn't play Paragon either. Yeah, it it wasn't really a game that seemed to have gone off as I think as well as they would have wanted it to. Um, Vicky, do you, have you heard anything about it? Correct? Well, he, no. he said he didn't even play it, so. Yeah, I heard about it, but I didn't play it, so I don't know. I haven't heard, I haven't really looked into it. Um, for any other reason? So, I'd like to say, off the bat, holy crap, that was some amazing artwork. You didn't really see him fight, you just saw him run around, monsters moving, but holy crap, that was beautiful. Just saying. I, I hate remakes. I really do. And when I saw this, it was kind of like, uh, it's like, okay... You have a remastered version, and they're like, no, 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 you guys don't understand. We're not remastering this in 4K. We're rebuilding this entire game. Like, we're really, we're remaking the whole game, and they're shipping it in 4K. And it just looks so good. It looks so perfect. And I'm like, I even though I hate remakes, I'm probably going to pre-order this thing. <laughs> like, I just... I'm just gonna pre-order it. I love Shadow Gloss. Shadow Gloss is like one of those it's another one of those games that's just it's perfect. Like I don't it's such a good game. It's one of those games that's just oh, it's like a classic. And for them to go and then to just 
put this in 4K in the way it deserved is like, oh, yes. The only thing is, I wish we were getting another part of the Ico series right, instead of... I wish we were getting another part of the Ico series plus this. So that's kind of the only thing that's bugging me. It's like, this may be something that we're getting in lieu of another, like, The Last Guardian, which was amazing. And I would like to see that, but it may not be so bad because Last Guardian, like, it's kind of still kind of still fairly recent. So I guess it's fine, but it's still something that's just, I just don't want this to get the Skyrim treatment. <laughs> Like, please, do not give this a Skyrim treatment. Where Skyrim was like, oh, Skyrim, 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 Skyrim. Like, I'm tired of Skyrim. Like, let's go, let's move on. Yeah, okay, Skyrim is great. Okay, let's move on now. So I hope they don't do that with Shadow of Colossus, where they're like, oh, man, like, everyone loves Shadow of Colossus, so let's put Shadow of Colossus on everything. Like, let's make, let's remake Shadow of Colossus, like, every single time. Like, we can remake it in as many different ways as we could. Um, the only thing I'm concerned about, and I'm hoping that they do, because... I might get bored with the game really quickly if they don't do this is i hope they change up the boss fights a little bit um if the boss fights are exactly exactly the same i mean from what i've seen the weak spots look like they are in the same spots um if it's exactly the same if the strategies for killing all the bosses are exactly the same then honestly i'll probably make it to like a boss three or four and stop and that's just like because at that point it's like oh yeah i've played the game already and that will be like really really have settled by then and then i probably would move on um regardless of how good the games look the game looks the gameplay still needs to change up a bit um the controls on the original was awful <laughs> like it was horrible i mean i can't say how many times that like i had like an assassin's creed moment where i was like jump up jump up and instead of jumping up he like jumped completely off from it and i, I died so like i've had a lot of moments like that so i hope they fix the controls which if it's a whole if it's a true remake where they're rebuilding it from the ground up then hopefully they fix that um but again if they don't fix like if they don't add to the gameplay then I don't know if that's really going to keep my attention when I get it. I'm, but I'm going to buy it regardless, so it, it kind of doesn't matter. <laughs> Vicky? Um, yeah, I'd agree with Chris. If, well, I personally feel as though if you're going to remake a game, then I want you to take the original one, break it down, and ask yourself a question, what can you do that? Like, if you're going to, like, if you could remake this game, how would you change it? How would you improve the game? So like if someone played if someone played the original one, which probably is like if they like Chris played the original one, they're gonna buy the, the remake as well. Um, I heard reviews of the original one was awesome, and if they're gonna remake it, which is what they're doing, I would like them to have like give it a bit of change. Like how Chris said that if the bosses weak spots are gonna be in the same spot, it's gonna become boring. It's gonna be really redundant. Whereas like, you're going to lose person's interest. Because like, every time you're going to be like, okay, you know, this is the weak spot and I have to kill the boss. Like, yeah, after a while, like Chris said, like, after he'd make it to, like, maybe 3, 4. Like, after a while, you're going to be like, okay, like, this is going to be boring. You're going to be like, okay, let me switch it out and put it in another game. Yeah. I could, I could definitely see that. Me, personally, I've never really played it. But, so I think it's not quite the same for me. And it's just, I'm seeing the beautifulness of it. Um, but for those who have played it, I, I could definitely see that.
Okay. I love rabbits, just off the bat. I wasn't expecting them to incorporate Mario into it, and I will admit there are certain points that make me really either chuckle or grin. Like the Donkey Kong scene. Um, it reminded me so much of Minions, and I think that's where the whole Minions idea kind of came from. Like the rabbits. But it... Ah, uh, it, it... Yeah, I think I'm... I'm if I could get this game, I probably would. <laughs> um, same here. If I get this game, I probably would. Um, it from from the trailer, I can see it reminds me of. I know you guys have played Mario Kart, but you know, like when you play Team Battles on Mario Kart, we have to destroy the person's three balloons. Yeah, it reminds me of that. Um, and by saying that, I could see that. This game would be more of like a Mario Party type of feel, whereas you would enjoy it more if your friends are. Um, you wouldn't get the full experience of the game if it's just you playing by yourself with the computer. Um, but if you have, like, I guess, family or friends come by and they want to jump something for a few minutes, and you guys can become, like, you guys can like get absorbed in this game, become super competitive with it. So, I, I, I would. I would personally buy this game. Um, I think the trailer is kind of funny. Like there are parts of the trailer that makes me chuckle and laugh. Like Peach, like when she blasted the rabbits herself, Mario was like, "Oh my gosh! Like you can actually do something without me helping you." <laughs> like you saw his face. Like that's exactly how it came off. So yeah, I I'd give I'd, I'd say kudos to Nintendo and Ubisoft for this. Uh, it was like. I feel like they were like, hey, let's do a crossover with Mario and Rayman. And it's like, oh, yeah, that'd be a great crossover. And it's like, yeah, but we don't want Rayman. Get those things. And it's like, what? <laughs> it's like, out of all the things you want to take from the Rayman universe, you take the rabbits. But, and then on top of that, you want to take Mario, take the rabbits from Rayman, put them together, and then you want to make a XCOM game. What? <laughs> just such a weird combination and I, I'm just like I'm pretty sure it's gonna work but out of all like seriously did you guys really have to take the rabbits like out of all the possible things out of Rayman that you could have taken you had to take the rabbits so I don't know I'm probably only gonna play this game because someone else has it I, I don't think I'm gonna get it um, because I'm not a big fan of XCOM and that like this game looks like it plays exactly like XCOM like this looks like an XCOM game just a uh, Mario version Mario Rayman version of XCOM so but it looks cool it looks fun um, as weird as it sounds putting rabbits uh, <laughs> with Mario so I think the Ascom thing, like it just it's just weird. And it's very surprising that um, Nintendo let them put guns in this too. So but I guess because it's really like a blaster and it's not like a gun gun that it's fine. So um to be quite honest, it kinda gave me a Super Mario Bros. Um Ah Lord, I'm forgetting the name, but it's the it's the game from the Wii U. Um, yeah, where you can pretty much move around the map and, but they've had a few different games like that, um, like Mario Party, stuff like that. So I think they're taking elements from Mario on a whole and just kind of giving it that rabid twist, which is interesting, and especially considering that there's a rabid peach and the regular peach and like. And like at one point, there's there's even like the um, the rabbit Mario and the regular Mario, and they go off in one another, and it's like, okay.
So I'm going to say this. It reminds me of Horizon without the robots. Monster Hunter is Monster Hunter. <laughs> period. <laughs> Monster Hunter existed before Horizon. Period. So Horizon or should remind me of Monster Hunter, not the other round. My only problem with Monster Hunter is, or the reason why I haven't been so into it was because it's consistently been on handle after handle after handle after handle after handle, and I don't really have, I don't really keep the handles like that. Like I had it on, uh, I think last time I played Monster Hunter was on PSP, like not the Vita, PSP. So <laughs> yeah, it's been a long while since I played um, Monster Hunter. So I'm. Really glad they're finally bringing it to the PS4, like an actual core console. So I think that's really good that they're doing. And I think the game just is bringing it like there's so much more mechanics that I, that I saw they do that I saw that was in the trailer that I don't know if it's in Monster Hunter now or not, but I'm not used to those mechanics at all. So that just looks like crazy good. Like that's probably another one that I'm going to get. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get it. I don't know how much I'll play it, but <laughs> I'll definitely get it. Um, I like like I don't know how much I'd play it. Uh, to me, well, I haven't played like you know, the originals on handheld, but for me, the storyline seems a bit redundant. So like, you know, I'm just traveling around and I'm killing basically. Like oh man, dinosaurs. Um, so like, where would where would the game go after that? Like, is it going to be the, the same continuous dinosaurs I'm killing? Um, basically, every time I play it, like, what's what's going on? Like afterwards, Cause, like I for me, I feel like I would personally get bored of it. Um, just traveling aimlessly, killing dinosaurs. I don't know. Um, so well, it's traditionally like, a thing you play with friends. So like, you'll go with friends and. What happens is you get like quests. So you have like a hub. There's only like a hub place. So you're at this hub, and that's where you can like get new equipment, get new items, get new weapons, and stuff like that. And you can use the items that you collect. So you can go and you can gather. Like that's that green thing that you're seeing is like highlighting things from the gather from. And you can like gather a lot. Now, to make certain weapons and armors, you need to gather like certain bones, certain meats, certain things from certain monsters that are out there and so that's where you get the hunting aspect where you have to go you have to find these beasts and figure out a way to kill them in order to harvest the different parts and then you have to harvest like enough of those things in order to make whatever weapons and items you need on top of that you're leveling up you're getting all these different skills and stuff like that so like but the biggest part of it is that whole you go you hunt these monsters you get the resources you use those resources to make better equipment better items and better gear and typically you do that with friends like typically you go and you do that with friends you guys will go load up in game and then you guys will go and you hunt and like i love the fact that they shown they didn't just show him fighting the dinosaur they showed him using a bunch of different traps and stuff like that in order to weaken and to like that's how you hunt like he didn't fight the dinosaur he hunted the dinosaur and I think that's the biggest difference. Like, it's not just you go out with your sword and you just, oh, you just like keep whacking it, whacking it, whacking it. Like, no, there's actually a strategy element to it where you have to go and you like actually set traps, lure it into those traps, and like use those traps effectively depending on what its strengths are and what its weaknesses are. So that's really what that's what Monster Hunter is, and that's I, I don't know, I like it. The whole strategy element to it is just amazing. The whole going out and hunting. Like actually hunting something down and not just hitting it with a stick, like oh, uh, hitting it with a stick until its HP is gone and it dies. Like that's that whole element is really really appealing to me. So that's why I like it. But so that's the whole that's the idea of what that game is, how the game works. Okay, now now that I get that, okay, I can see, I can see why you would enjoy the game. So. We're actually going to move on to our next one, and if I remember correctly, this is actually our last one. This one is Anthem, which 
Chris previously said. About time. <laughs> <laughs> um, would blow away Destiny 2 if it were to come out same time. Here we go. The wall. It's our armor. It protects us from what lies beyond. But out there... You either live with the choices you make... ...or die trying to change them. The story doesn't end here. It's just the beginning. That is a true teaser. Now, I saw the extended version where they went into like gameplay a little bit more and stuff like that, but... I have to admit, I, I really do like what I'm seeing so far. Same here as well. Like... For me, who haven't played a game since PS3, I would purchase a console to play that. Like, when I saw the game, I was like, oh, this is actually kind of interesting. Like, for, for it to catch my attention, it has to be something really good. I think the what sold it for me definitely was definitely the gameplay. Like, that gameplay for you was just, it was just strict. I remember when I first saw it, like, I was watching it, and I was just like, okay, this looks pretty cool. Like, graphics are nice. That's what I was saying. I was like, wow, the graphics are pretty, pretty. I'm like, okay, so it's another one of these, you know, mechanical suit, you're inside a robot suit and you're shooting things. So, okay, great. Then, as they're playing, as they're playing, they are, like, getting ready to go for a mission. And then, this gal jumps off of the platform she's on, and I'm like, okay, so, the, like, you, you guys are really, really high up. What the hell are you going to do? And her body turns down, rockets blast out of her back as she starts flying and i'm like what <laughs> what is this at that moment when she started flying i was sold i was like this game is crazy because i was not expecting that at all and the game just looks it's it looks like it's actually open world which destiny isn't but at least destiny one wasn't and it's like the game is so beautiful and you're just flying around in a suit with probably friends and then you could like upgrade with weapons and stuff like that and these people were just having a blast i mean they were blowing up stuff left right and center and it just looks like such a fun game it just looks like you just go in there and just fly around blow up stuff have a blast and it looks like it has like mission objectives while doing all of that which is just it's just it's just amazing now i'm gonna actually just play it really quickly since you know, this really seems to be a thing. So let's just get this right up on here. Okay. So that's not working out the way I was hoping it would. Um... really quick I guess that's not gonna work oh well um yeah the gameplay trailer for it is what really sold it for me it's just you know that trailer within itself is like almost eight minutes long um, yeah, it's a really long trailer. <laughs> yeah, but it's a beautiful because, trailer. Yeah, it really is. Like, I think the only thing I didn't like about it was the those the, the people talking. I was like, why? Why do you guys get these same old cheap actors from um, that other? I forgot what game it was, but they did another trailer before, and it was like, oh, like a gameplay trailer where they acted like they were playing. So. Again, beautiful game. Uh, Nasty game. Nasty. <laughs> eh. Eh. 
Oh. I'm not sure how much open world it really is, though. Like, sure, you can fly around for a bit, but just how much can you really do before the game pulls you into one direction? Who knows? I, I don't know. I know that that game could pull me where everyone wants to pull me because I will follow it wherever it lets me go. That That's just... That is just beautiful. Like, it is so... So gorgeous. It's so good. Oh, man. The only reason why Anthem isn't like the most excited one, the most I would I would have been Anthem would have been my top most anticipated game from E3 had it not been backed by EA. Had it not been backed by EA, it literally would have been my most anticipated game from E3. But because EA EA is involved and they just they just can't help themselves. They have to screw something up. They just have to. Like they, they literally have to screw something up. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront, yeah, they screwed that up. Like, it was such a clear cut, like, they had a perfect game that all they had to do was take that perfect game, add maybe a little bit of updated modern stuff to it, but keep it at its essence, and they would have had a solid game. It's like, ah, nah, let's not do that. Let's just forget all of that and give these people these garbage stuff. And it's like, EA, why? Why are you doing this? Why EA? Why? So, we'll see how Battlefront 2, because I was shown at E3 as well, we'll see how Battlefront 2 does. But it looks like they fixed all the issues that they had in the first one, but it's, again, it's EA, so Micro they probably had not so much. So, they're probably going to screw it over. Like, I, I just can see them ruining an amazing game like Anthem simply because it's EA. Like that's that's just what they do now. Okay, well, guys, thank you for donating about almost four hours of your time. Yeah. Um, this has been quite enjoyable first stream for the More Cookies Tech Talk Show. Um, I hope that I can get you guys on. In future shows, from time to time, at least. Yeah. And, uh, guys, if you enjoyed watching this show, please let me know. Write in the comments, either on Twitch in the live chat, or if you're on Facebook, down in the comments, you know, showing the love. Share the pages, however you're watching. Get the word Not out love 2.0, though. Not love 2.0. Not love 2.0. Not love 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> <Hey, you. laughs> <laughs> but yes thank you for taking the time to also watch you know we can't do this without the support that you guys give and uh you know it it definitely helps so signing out more cookies <laughs>